Hi folks. Things are getting a little bit back to normal around here. I've got a little bit more time to work out in the shop and take care of this mountain of things that are going on. Now, I had a comment from a person that says, I'm tired of all you American people that do stuff. You never do things in order and finish it. Well, I'm sorry. I'm one guy. I think last month I got $63 from uh, YouTube. And so I do things on my own pace and when I can. A lot of the projects that are going on right now are going to require scraping. I've got the $9,000 or $7,000 mistake lathe that I'm working on. Got to scrape its bed somehow or grind its bed. It's a hardened bed. That's why I'm making a rail system. I didn't have the material for the rail system, so I went to Mississippi and uh, Clark at Windy Hill Foundry and I made two cast iron rails that are sitting right outside that garage waiting to be cleaned up and brought in here stress relieved. But meanwhile, the bridge port's sitting there waiting on its bed to be scraped. And to scrape the bed of the bridge port, I gotta have a four foot angled straight edge. Well, as you've been following along, I've been working on that. Anyway, my goal is to get all of these things that need scraped ready to go and then just start scraping like a mad fool. I find that when I do a lot of the stuff repetitively, like that, all at one time, I get even better as I get near the end. So, that's what's happening. But this little jewel snuck in. Now, I have a barber that cuts my hair and beard, and uh, I really like her, and she does a great job, and, and now, this little job snuck in amongst all the other jobs, and it's sort of a, a job I want to do for a friend. In fact, she's my barber. She's a very nice lady that's been cutting my hair for years, and she owns the barber shop up in College Station, Texas, called The Barber Shop. So if you ever need a good haircut, that's where you go. Anyway, this is the stool or foot off of her chair. And over the years, it's been worrying her and finally it broke. So I need to fix this. She bought a cheap chair to keep her, uh, keep her going. And she told me it's spent $800 on it and it's fallen apart already. This she tells me is a very quality chair but she worries when someone steps on it to get into the chair that it's gonna hurt somebody. In fact, it did break. Didn't hurt anybody, but it's broken. And now it's my job to make it where it doesn't ever do it again. You gotta be kind of a little detective about these things. Now this part, I went up there and tore it apart. This is a cast iron casting that's been chromed on the outside, still rough on the inside where they couldn't get it smooth enough. And this is basically attached to the chair at an angle like here. Your back of your calves fit up against this. And this casting comes down and allows this piece to bolt onto it. It's got two places here. This one's busted all to pieces. This one is cracked in several places. And I'll show you in a minute how somebody repaired it. In fact, if I get a close-up camera, you could see it better here. Okay, well, close-up time. This is that casting that they, they buffed out and smoothed over and then chromed. Same way on this side. And there's where it broke. It broke the edge off of that. Now this one, as you can see, has been repaired before. They even doubled the thickness of it and welded it in. It looks like the weld held but see right here, 
That one's cracked all the way back through here. Not cracked anywhere else, just right down through here. So that's a future problem. This is a problem that happening right now. Now this piece is steel. It's a piece of plate. Let me get the other piece and show you what's going on. Now this is the step you would step up on. As you can see here, it's all cast. And it's had problems over the years. Somebody's welded that on, and it looks to be in pretty dead gum good shape. I don't see it cracking or anywhere. And it's bolted to this foot piece, which is in good shape. And then we get over here. Now, if this piece doesn't have any cracks in all the way, which surprises me, what's been happening is these bolts here been busting this off. If you might notice something, something stands out like a sore thumb. One, two, three, one, two. They didn't put anything here on that side to help distribute the weight. Now, I don't know if there was something there. It doesn't look like anything's ever been there. But if you look here, you see this plate, you see this plate, and that piece right there has been threaded. This is a piece of steel. Now the question is, how in the heck are we going to fix it? Because I don't want it to, to break on anybody, much less me. Well, did you have time to think about how you would fix it? You know, there's probably no right way. There's a lot of wrong ways. Even if you were to send off and try to buy that casting from somebody, I'm afraid it's just a fatal design flaw that's going to break again on you. So... I don't even know if you can buy these parts today in our world. So what I'm going to do is use the tools at my shop and try to think of the best way I can do it. And I was going to do it one way and it changed overnight. Uh, let me show you another problem. You see anything wrong? These folks put this bolt through here, and on this side, it's slanted. And when they tightened the bejesus out of it, it bent that bolt. Put a lot of undue pressure on that thread. So it's going to be hard to get those bolts off, probably. And then they'll be bent and stressed, so we're going to have to put new bolts in. That one... It's threaded up here. Is line this up. And here's what I... You've had enough time to figure out how you're going to do it. Drop me a comment and tell me how you would have done it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this plate with this plate. I'm going to put another bracket right here to carry this bolt afterwards. But I think that these two plates are going to weld up on each other. And so that's what I'm going to try first. See if it works. I did get busy the other day when I was going to do something. And I just took some metal and built it up on the press, or bent it up on the press, and was going to put one of these out here, cut this off, put a new one here, weld them on, and Bob's your uncle. But,
still got a problem with that over there. Now, I know all these metals are dissimilar and that kind of adds a problem to the mix. And when I was looking at it, I was wondering if this was going to be cast steel. But I took the grinder and I'll show you what I did. And you, I'm going to put a little uh, spark test on this. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at the sparks as they come off of this. Maybe I'll hook you up with another camera so you can see better. See how there weren't many sparks and they were dull? Well, this is a piece of Durabar. And for comparison, you can do the spark test on a known material and see what it looks like. See how that was pretty fine? And now, here's an unknown piece of steel, but I know it's steel. Watch the sparks on it. how bright they were and how many more sparks there were that's a characteristic of steel the dull smaller amount of sparking was a characteristic of the cast iron so now I want to know is what did this patch that they made over here what did they do with that did they put a piece of steel on it use a nickel rod to tie it into the cast iron did they make a piece of cast iron I suspect it's cast iron the way it cracked right there. Let's see. It's cast iron. A lot fewer sparks, that duller red color. Nothing like this was. So we know that this is cast iron, this is cast iron, this is steel. Because I'm going to clean that edge up real quick and show you there. Oh. Get all the paint off of it. Mill scale, whatever. <laughs> all right. Put the bolts back in these two threaded holes so I can line them up with that. I don't think that's very precision back there. What strikes me is these holes are threaded, so they're more precision than the wallered out ones behind it. So what I'm going to do is line all this up and tack it in place. And see what we can do. It tries to slide down the hill, so we'll put this there. Slide that over there. Put a clamp on it. I don't know if you can see them over here on the table. We got a lot of these things to put together. For years. All right. You can see there. Uh, Got everything lined up and I've got a pretty decent gap right there. Equal over here. These bolts are going through those holes, so they're in line. That one didn't have anything. 
So what I have to do is weld this, and, and, and I just can't start on one side and just go ramp. If I do that, this will all get warped. So I'm going to hit this a little bit more with a, a buffer, get some more of that paint off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, right now that I'm going to put something like this right there. I think I'm going to put two of them. One here and one here. And weld them on. So, it behooved me to go ahead and grind that off so I can do that and that, that wire wheel's not doing it, so let's do it with this. And just for the heck of it, I think I'm going to tag it or uh, tack it right there first thing, then turn it over. Let's get the welder going. Pardon the noise, but that's the... Uh, Rotary phase converter up there on the mezzanine. Someday it'll be moved outside. But right now I gotta work on the barber chair. And I need some brackets. And so I'm gonna show you how I made the little brackets that I'm gonna weld on the back. This is my, my Diarco. Well, that, you're gonna fall down. It'll be like you're drunk over there. How about this? Woohoo! What can you see? Now this is my Diarco 17 ton dual pump, four foot brake. And I don't use it very much, but when I need it, I need it. I'm going to use it to bend some of this metal that I'm going to put over there. Start it up. Got a foot brake down here. I'm just going to put this Lined up the best I can back there on the back. Straight across here in the front. Put it in reverse. how we're going to make the little brackets. You know, it helps when you have a shop to have all the tools at your disposal. And for years and years and years and years, I haven't had all the tools. It's taken me years to get the tools that I have and be able to fix them because I'm not a rich guy. Have to buy old crappy things and make it work. But my goal is to have all the tools I need to fix almost any dead gun thing I want to fix. There. As you can see, I went over there and, and bent this piece of metal on my Diarco brake. Didn't take too long. A lot easier than beating on it with a hammer again. The other day I made these two little pieces to get that angle just about perfect. And as you can see on these, I overshot it a little bit. Well, there's a simple solution to that. And it's sitting over here by the cat stuff. Go 
boy cat food. Cats have taken over my shop. And if you go too far on a project like this, you just can put it here and go back. until you get to the shape you need which is this put it up there there we go that's perfect like my hammer this one the young blacksmith gave to me I like it don't know about the young blacksmith I'll put a link up here somewhere all right, got the machine hooked up. I we'll turn it on and go get some gas going. And uh, I'm gonna go get a welding shirt on and uh, my hood. You know, I kind of feel like a, a wuss putting all this stuff on. But dead gummit, I'm old and can afford it, so I do it. I always wanted one of the welding hood, portable welding hoods that they make. And I know where one is. But so far, Howard and I don't see eye to eye on the cost of it. So I went and bought one of these Optrail with the uh, filter belt. I love it too. In fact, this doesn't take up any space except in a cabinet, whereas that Lincoln uh, fume hood does. And this has the added benefit of keeping my glasses clear. So I think I like this much better than a dedicated rolled around unit. But. I've never had a dedicated roll around unit, so I don't know for sure. All right, let's tack this thing on. This is battery pack, got a HEPA filter in it. Put it on your, your, your back of your side right here so you can reach your controls. Belt goes up, or the hood goes up over your, the hose goes up over your shoulder. plugs in the back of this. And when I bought this one, I also bought for free, so I guess I didn't buy it, but they gave me the matching clear face shield that plugs into this. So I'm happy with it too. All right, let's go contact on this thing. Got to remember where the buttons are every time. go and I have a set of cheaters inside here so I don't have to worry about that and the way this goes on is it goes over your shoulder you got a little tab right here and you put it on your head and then you just pull this over your chin that seals everything I'm going to build this up.
I decided to kind of protect this chrome surface a little bit. See if And we'll put a little anti-spatter on this painted surface just for the heck of it. There. So it's pretty nice. You you know you just pick it up. You gotta. I think you're a Dalai Lama or something with this tag there, but it works. I like it. Sort of like the, the handle on the Optograph, you know? Doing this in sections so I don't weld it and get it too hot and warp it so much. You know, that's pretty hot there. Should have done just maybe two inches, but I think it's supported well enough. It'd be fine. Remember, got it tacked on the back. It's clamped to the angle on both sides, so. What's that saying? I think it'll work. big hammer. I don't fix that. station. Oh, you're perfecto. Gotta put this up and hide it. Found my wife trying to use it the other day to smash pumpkins. I caught her just in time. $300 hammer.
go let's tack that on then we'll remove the clamp so they don't get all welded up I am beginning I am beginning to be a little cross-eyed by this thing Well, the camera cut off for a minute, but I got finished with what I was going to do. I can't say enough about this Optro helmet. I bought it, paid full price for it. I think I got it from Baker Gas. They had a pretty good deal on them. But this cool air supply is just worth its weight in gold. We'll put this up and I'll be right back. Here's the other part. I got it free. This is the, the face shield. Same everything. Doesn't have a OptiGrab handle. It's got a ring on this one. This must have been too many cross-sided customers. Anyway, that's Someday I'm going to make a hose rack for this thing. I don't like any of the ones I've seen, so I'll have to come up with something better. And I promise you, the bridge report and the 10 EE will be finished before we do. <laughs> Well, I'm going to show you some of my welds. Now, keep in mind that uh, I weld about once every month. Feel the heat coming off of that one. And then on the back side. I welded in two extra braces. I don't need to fix those ears because the new part right here is threaded already. So all I'm going to do is mess, just leave that cast iron alone. I don't want to mess it up anymore on the outside. But those two little extra braces ought to hold that thing till the cows come home. See a little ridge where I let it pile up too high. It wasn't going fast enough. So I'm going to grind that down so that thing can fit flat against that plate.
You know, I have a friend that I think it's a little bit touched. He built a steel sailing vessel, 74 feet long, in the front yard of his house, two and a half miles from downtown Tulsa. I went up there and worked on it for a couple weeks over the years. Somewhere up here are some lakes. The man started off, he absolutely didn't know how to weld. And it reminded me of when I was 10 years old, working at my father's shop, I decided I was gonna build me a go-kart. And I got the welder out and some scrap stuff and started banging one together, sitting on the ground like they do in Pakistan, welding between my legs. That's when I found out that you don't weld between your legs if you're a red-headed, white-skinned guy like me. I hurt for years. <laughs> well, not years. But if my wife asked, I hurt for years. Anyway, my friend on the SV Seeker, Doug, taught himself how to weld, and, and he's got a shirt that I laugh at every time I see it. On the back of it, it says welder, and it's got a line drawn through it, and it says grinding God. <laughs> Grinders make everything look good here. That's that front grind after I did it. If I took a file and did all that, I could make it look, you know, pretty much factory. But you'll never ever see this little piece once I get it all put the, there's a covering that goes over all this. But that made a pretty dadgum good full penetration weld all the way through there. So this is now effectively part of this. And with those two braces that I installed and plus this side bracket here, I don't think it's going to ever break off. And so the next part that will fail will be this aluminum piece. But hopefully that's a long time from now. That's that front grind after I did it. If I took a file and did all that, I could make it look, you know, pretty much factory. But you'll never ever see this little piece once I get it all put the there's a covering that goes over all this but that made a pretty dead gum good full penetration weld all the way through there so this is now effectively part of this and with those two braces that I installed and plus this side bracket here I don't think it's going to ever break off and so the next part that will fail will be this aluminum piece. But hopefully that's a long time from now. When I get it all together, I'll show you what it looks like. Thanks for watching.
I gotta show you after this. But they made some nice welds that won't ever come apart on them. Built up thick enough so they won't ever crack. So it's all to work. Well, I found some painted cap matches at least. God knows how old it is. Just keep it from rusting and leaking out all over the floor. Heck, that looks pretty close to what it dries like. I get yelled at every time I don't wear a glove. So, there, there's a glove. And, And here we go. Just kidding. Just kidding. I have a little fun. So I'm going to just test put it together and see if it's going to work. Gotta love these new paints. You know, that's why they do powder coating nowadays. The powder coating is not because it's a superior finish, it's because they can spray it on run it through the heat treating oven and put it in a box that's ready to go. They don't have to wait for things to dry. In fact, I find powder coating to be worse in lots of cases because there's a little crack in it, stuff gets underneath there and it just peels it off. Okay. Lift this up in the air a little bit so that the bolts can go under. I hope y'all can see in there. I'm going to get some better bolts and I'm going to make some washers that are tapered so they'll fit here. I could take a grinder and just grind it down to flat, but I want all the strength there is in this little area. Well, you can't see that. This piece here is tapered, and when they put these bolts through it in the first place, they bent the bolts because they were pulling it up tight against those nuts on that taper. So I'll make some little flat washers that are tapered to, to make the nut fit on there straight. Let's see here. walk three feet over to my little toolbox that I keep out here the odds and ends and the bolt was laying on top so do till I get some new ones 
And technically, I don't need to make washers or nuts behind them because these things are going through this threaded bar. So we will see. So there we go. How about that, sports fans? Well, you're looking over here. You're coveting my uh, mag drill. Don't do that. Look over here. So there we go. We have a nice, clean finish up against this edge. It's pretty dang solid, I believe. Mess the paint up. But luckily I have more paint. Sitting up on top of my little rest block I use. There you go. So if I put a nut on this, I'm not gonna do it because of the washer. That will tie all this piece in, and I could do that, but it's welded on the other side, full thickness. I don't think you even need to do that. Anyway, it's a heavy little unit. That's how, that's how I fixed it. How would you do it? Always looking to learn from people. Think she'll be happy. And when I, my fat butt gets in there, it won't break off. Thank you for watching again. Bye.